Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie. I have eight children that I have homeschooled from the beginning and I was actually homeschooled myself for part of my education. Now I know many of you are suddenly finding yourself in a position of schooling from home because of current life events. And I just wanted to make a quick video with some tips that might make your days easier. This does not have to be a stressful thing for you. This can be a really enjoyable time in your life that you look back upon with fond memories. So let's just break it down of how you can simplify your days and school at home in a way that you enjoy. My first very big tip is to remove from your mind the thought that you need to recreate school in your home. Schools were set up for a specific purpose. They are structured the way they are because there are a lot of children that they're trying to manage. It is a necessary thing there. But you are in your home. You do not need to set up your day like a school. Learning will happen very fluidly and naturally as you go through your day with your children. You don't need to feel overwhelmed. Um, it's actually much easier than you would think to educate your children. Children are sponges. They naturally enjoy learning. If you set up just the space of time, that's the important space that you need to set up, is a space of time for learning to happen. So during this time that you're schooling at home, you need to focus on skills rather than content. Content is fine, that can come. That would be, for example, learning about specific wars in, that happened in history or a very specific um, biology versus you know earth science or whatever it may be with the content that's not what matters so much your job right now is just to focus on skills and then when your child gets back to a point that they're back in their regular school they will be doing just fine because they will have spent the time away practicing those skills improving their skills so what do you need to practice there's really just a few things number one is math Math is something that you can continue doing so that your child is having that part of their brain constantly worked. Now we use teaching textbooks for math. It makes math so easy for the parent. I know that I am not naturally a math person and that was one thing that I was a little apprehensive about when I started homeschooling. But teaching textbooks has really taken the heat off of me. They do the work for you. So it's actually an online program that I have all of my children in. Um, my youngest is in first grade. I have him in the first level, teaching textbooks level three. On up to my eighth grader, they all do this program. So each day when your child logs in, they will have a little lecture that talks about the new concept they're learning, and then they'll go into that day's questions. And the wonderful thing about it is that your child will know immediately if they are doing a question right or wrong. They won't have to wait until the end of a workbook page to find out, oops, we did all of those questions wrong because you didn't understand something. They will know right away. The program tells you if you got it right, if you got it wrong, they'll give you another chance. They have a feature that can show you how to do that problem if you really didn't understand it. And they have a hotline where you can actually call and talk to a tutor that can walk your child through if there's something that they're struggling with. Um, this program is very worth the money. So if math is an area that you are feeling apprehensive about during this school at home time, I recommend that you check out teaching textbooks. The next skill that I feel is important to be working on daily is the area of language arts. Now again, this does not need to be as complicated as you might think. There is a beautiful thing called copy work that helps to reinforce writing and grammar and spelling and handwriting all at once. Copy work is actually a concept that has is not new. It is the way that children were taught to write up until the 20th century. It is only in modern years that we do things differently. But if you do some research about great figures in history, chances are they were taught to write through copy work. And it's very simple. You just find a good passage of writing for your child to literally copy out word for word. They will learn spelling, punctuation. They will learn um, the parts of speech. They will learn you know, capitalization and vocabulary and proper grammar. They will learn kind of the, the idea of how a good piece of writing is put together. All of this will be happening in your child's mind as they are copying from a good piece of writing. Copy work also improves memory, it helps with focus, and of course your handwriting is covered as well. 
Susan Wise Bauer wrote the book The Well-Trained Mind and she said that the purpose of copy work is to get into the child's visual and motor memory the look and feel of a sentence that is correctly composed, properly spaced, and spelled, and punctuated. So this is just a very easy way for you to cover all of those areas at once. And I actually, there was an article that I read that really encouraged me that I will link below in my description box so that you could check it out for yourself to learn more about it. So then the third area that we really focus on in our house is reading. So this comes in two forms. I read aloud to my children for enjoyment and because reading aloud to your child has been found to greatly increase the abilities of their mind. They are hearing things and having to process them in a way that they don't get in any other area of their life. So reading aloud to your child is a wonderful thing to do daily and also to provide a time for your child to have some silent reading where they are reading just to themselves. If you have a pre-reader who is going to be schooling from home this year, I will link my video of how we teach children to read using one easy, cheap book. It has worked for all of my children. I'm actually teaching my five-year-old right now, who is my sixth child that I will have taught to read using this book. And my last tip for you is to set up a rhythm in your house, not necessarily a schedule, but a routine to your days. Um, it's necessary to have some type of expectations for your children so they understand what is going to be happening, what is expected of them when they're finished, but it's not necessary to set up a rigid schedule by the clock. Here at our house, we have a block schedule where we have listed out a general pattern to how our days go, and it helps my children to kind of understand what's expected of them. We also do formal schooling just four days a week, which gives us that fifth day of a week to just enjoy doing other things that are not related to table work or to just do a deep clean on the house. I find that it is very important to set strict limits with screen time. Screen time is the one thing that can greatly interfere with your child's willingness to just learn and explore things on their own. And so at our house, other than our math, which is of course done online, we save any kinds of screen time for after all of the children's chores and schoolwork is finished and that they've had some time to play and read. I provide a space for that as well because you know how children are. Some of them will quickly gravitate toward jumping on a screen to entertain themselves and I want to give my children a childhood that is not run by screens. Don't worry about putting pressure on yourself to try to recreate the classroom in your home. Schooling actually does not take that long. There's a lot of time spent on things like standing in line or organizing children in a classroom that makes that day stretch on a lot longer. The average amount of time that it takes like an elementary or middle school child to complete the actual sit down schoolwork is only about three hours a day. And for an, a high school student who is really diving deeper, you would need to expect no more than five hours a day. And that includes time that they're sitting and silently reading a book to themselves or listening to you read. All of those things are included in that learning time. And so it does not take as much time as you think. It's not as stressful as you might think. We as humans are natural learners. And if we're placed in the right environment where learning is encouraged, we generally will flourish. Also, I forgot to mention that Teaching Textbooks offers a free trial. The first 15 lessons of every level is offered for free so that you can try it out. So if you will go to their website, which I will link below, you can sign up for that free trial. If you have any other questions, be sure to ask me in the comments below and check out the other videos on my channel. I will show you our playlist here of how we homeschool in our house. It has been a blessing to be able to be with my children each day and I hope that this year is a blessing to you as well.